Hello, my friend, and welcome to TFU News and Views. I am your host, Anthony Brucali, owner, operator, madman behind TFU.info, the website, the Toy Archive, this podcast, Transformers University podcast, the YouTube channel, the social media, and so much more. I want to welcome you to uh, what I'm calling a very special and hopefully fun new take on TFU News and Views. Now, I have a lot to talk about. It's been a while, it's been a while. since I've chatted with you other than the New York Comic Con preview. So I figured let's talk about a whole bunch of things. And a lot of them are going to be Transformers related, and we're going to actually even go off into some tangents as well, because there was a lot of cool stuff in New York Comic Con. There was a lot of cool stuff that's happened in the weeks since, um, and figured this is a fun way for you, my listeners and my students over on Patreon, patreon.com slash TFU info, uh, just to get to know me and get to know what I like and, uh, uh, you know, connect with me a little bit more. So... Unlike other shows where I've heard uh, some of the hosts kind of delve off into things they like that are off topic but close or semi-related to what the show talks about, and even what I've done here on TFU News and Views in the past, uh, I think I'm going to pepper stuff in as we go. So don't be too quick to hit that fast forward button because... If I'm talking about something that may maybe doesn't interest you, you know, outright, stick around because I'm probably going to bring it back to uh, something Transformers related as we go. And uh, speaking of which, speaking of the delay uh, to our episodes here at uh, TFU.info, uh, it's been a busy, busy October. Uh, if you were here about a year ago, you knew I became a dad, which means uh, my daughter... Cassidy celebrated her first birthday this month, and um, it has been quite a year. And she is just the most amazing little girl. And I just want to wish her a very happy first birthday before we get into everything else. She is the best little girl a dad could want. Now, we're going to go and talk a little bit about New York Comic Con. Now, if you've heard me uh, guest on a number of other podcasts this month, uh, and we'll talk a bit about where you can find those, uh, I talked a lot about what happened and how it went down. And if you didn't hear them, I'll kind of break it down for you. So we got invited. And when I say we, I mean me uh, as TFU.info. And this year I brought along uh, an extra set of hands, some help to help with the social media and help with taking photos. And he was an amazing, amazing help. And that is Miguel from Steel City Bots. So if you don't listen to Steel City Bots podcast, what are you doing? Uh, it is a great show. It's a lot of young uh, people's, everyone on that show is 25 and under. Uh, it's younger fans' insights into Transformers. And as someone who is now 41, uh, it is certainly quite refreshing. They remind me very much of me and my friends uh, when we were that age and younger. So definitely give it a listen but Miguel was a huge help and uh, we were invited to attend a number of things at uh, off-site events for Hasbro at New York Comic Con so New York Comic Con if you haven't heard me speak about this before Hasbro tends to not have an official presence there at New York Comic Con and this year was no different there was no TF table uh, there's no Transformers table Hasbro table um, there was no Hasbro specific panel um, involved with the convention there was a panel uh where the design team was interviewed for about an hour but that was not done through the con that was done through sci-fi network and um and you may have seen pictures of unicron at new york comic con that was also not at a hasbro uh booth that was at uh the pop insider booth they had some sort of arrangement with Hasbro to have that shown there. So we were invited to a number of things. The first thing, which I couldn't talk about right away uh, because we were under embargo uh, till the end of the weekend, and that was the unboxing of Siege Wave 5. 
Uh, they took us basically to a, a WeWork space offsite from New York Comic Con, basically on the exact opposite side of Manhattan Island. And we had a chance to uh, sit and play with these toys uh, for about an hour, hour and change. Take photos, take video. I have a whole bunch of unpublished video I still have to post. And uh, ultimately, they let us take these home. And what a great idea to let us take them home. Because that hour goes so quickly. Uh, you know, it is great that Hasbro is letting us uh, tool around with their new stuff. And these, were, these weren't like samples. These were, you know, retail product. We unboxed them. We took them out of the package. Uh, we got the instructions, the card art, everything uh, under the sun. And I really hope that they make this a, a part of the, uh, the standard procedure, uh, letting whoever's doing the unboxing take them home. Because, I, look, I love free toys. I'm not going to pretend like that's not you know, a cool factor to me. But it gives us a chance to really play around with the figures and, and see where they succeed and see where they fail. And and interact them with our current collections and 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 be able to do much deeper dives into our, our photography and our reviews. Uh, if you saw that story going around of Siege uh, Astro Train alongside Titan's Return Astro Train, that was Miguel's photo. Uh, he did that when he got home with the Astro Train figure. Some uh, of the other Transformer sites uh, accidentally uh, credited it to a Philippine news group, uh, a Facebook group, uh, and uh, they never went back and corrected that. The story still originated from our, our New York Comic Con coverage, and it, it only originated because Hasbro let us take those figures home. Now, after that unboxing event, we made our way over to the Jacob Javits Center across town to get to the 11 a.m. Transformers panel quote and i'm saying that in air quotes because it was uh on the uh sci-fi uh sci-fi wire stage and it was an interview with uh john warden and ben montano uh that's where we saw unicron uh, in person uh for one thing but the uh, the big reveal of that panel was the next titan and that uh not surprisingly was scorponok uh or at least uh the parts they shown uh were some sort of zarek Mega Zarek combination, and uh, they'll be the head of Scorponok. So, looking forward to seeing that hopefully a toy fair in February, which surprisingly is not that far away. It is just a tad over three months away uh, as of this recording, and uh, as of this recording, Christmas is just about two months away. So, do the math Christmas, January, toy fair. That's usually how things go. The cooler thing we're seeing uh, Unicron in person. Uh, boy, is that figure huge. Uh, if you didn't back it, um, you know, and you could have, uh, I feel very sorry for you. If you didn't back it and you couldn't have, hey, that's, you know, it was an expensive figure. I get it. Um, I, I went through a lot of soul searching and back and forth on whether or not I should uh, put that money out and put that money into it. And ultimately I landed on backing it. And I think that is a personal decision for whoever is uh, holding the wallet. And I am just glad it is getting made because if I didn't back it, I would be glad that it was getting made because as a fandom, uh, these things don't come around often and they're pretty damn cool. And I'm sitting here playing with uh, Siege Wave 5 Spinister, and oh my goodness, is this a great toy. Um, it is a super, it, it is basically a six inch, ac six inch action figure that transforms into a helicopter. Uh, it is super poseable. The leg uh, design is really neat. The way the cockpit flips around is really neat. But th this is one of the best deluxes I think I've ever played with, and I, I can't. Uh, tout this figure enough I'm wondering what what they have planned for it as far as making it another toy and making it a uh, some sort of repaint or retool uh, but time will tell on that one I guess uh, what else do we have to talk about so oh yes <laughs> so after the Unicron uh, after the sci-fi wire panel and gawking at Unicron in person and I forgot to mention those uh 
slug figures that come with it, the Rodimus and the Galvatron, are super tiny. Oh my goodness, are they tiny. Let's put it this way. If you have a ballpoint pen in front of you, they're about the size of the ballpoint on a ballpoint pen. Uh, maybe they're a touch bigger, but next to Unicron, they look even smaller. The ship looked really cool, though. Um, the, the, the Unicron's just going to be super fun. I'm glad it funded. Like I said, that weekend it funded, if uh, if you remember. And uh, it looks like we broke broke the number by about 3,000. Uh, I think the final totals a lot of people are reporting is about 11,000. You know, when you break that down, I know the $600 is a large spend. Uh, I'm with you on that one. Uh, but when you break down 11,000 pieces, that's about the number you would see for a series of BotCon exclusives. And I don't mean 11,000 total. I mean 11,000 per exclusive figure. So I was doing the math on one of the last BotCons and how much different uh, Unicron would cost. And Unicron's actually cheaper. When you think about, like, a Primus package was about 350 right? 40 bucks to be in the club. That and that was a club rate, so forty dollars to be in the club, so that is three ninety, and then a roughly two to three hundred dollars of souvenir figures at the convention. So let's say let's say it's a two. I'll go two fifty. We'll split the difference. Two fifty, right? So three ninety plus two fifty. That's five ninety. You're already over six hundred. You're at six six forty. That's besides the fact that you have to now go and get them at the convention because they didn't ship those. So you had to then fly out there, get a hotel room, be at the con. That is another dollar factor uh, that may not go straight to the toy, but is involved in picking those toys up. So all in all, when you think about Unicron as a once in a lifetime shot, as a once a year thing, it's not that far off from doing a, a BotCon, from going to the official convention. Now, back to this convention. Uh, finally, that afternoon, Hasbro did their product reveal uh, with us. And I streamed that live on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash TFU info. We got the Earthrise uh, figures shown to us in person. I am really into these toys i love the uh, play pattern we currently have so seeing a little bit more of that seeing the blast effects return that's all really big to me i, I like the idea of the micromaster bases as deluxe weaponizers uh there's there's gonna be a lot of fun here uh you got me with wheeljack you, you know i love a good wheeljack figure so i'm in on that the starscream mold looks great and i'm in on that one as well and it's going to be fun to see how all this lines up with Trypticon. It's also going to be fun to see what Decepticons we get going forward. Because other than Starscream and Astrotrain as the carryover figure and the Micromasters, uh, we haven't seen much by way of Decepticons. There's going to be some deluxes. My beast theory still stands, um, though it's probably got a few holes in it. It might be for part three of this story, but who knows? There are plenty of mechanical beasts in late G1, uh, so we could see them get revamped in Earthrise or the subsequent series. Uh, the big surprise for me was the Cyberverse Deluxe figures that we saw in the McAdam build a figure. Uh, both of those are really cool uh, things. Um, the, the figures look great. I'm glad I've held off for the most part on Cyberverse. Uh, because the toys have been kind of reviewed poorly, and I'm glad to see that they're upping their game with a deluxe class since the Warrior class seemed to be a step back from the Robots in Disguise 2017 Warrior class. Now, while we're on the subject of Cyberverse, and I won't get too deep in the weeds, because I know people don't want to be spoiled, I just watched Episode 7. I could have watched Episode 8, and I didn't really have a chance to. Um, I don't want to get too far too fast on the show, but I've been told that what happens at the end of episode seven sticks throughout the series, uh, the season. And I got to say that that is that is a uh, pretty nice move by the writers. Good job, Randolph Hurd and uh, the writing team on the show. That said, I really like uh, this season. It really does feel like G1 season, you know, four plus or five uh, to some extent. The, 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 
okay, maybe not exactly because it's not really in continuity, but it really does feel like just uh, G1 in essence at this point. I'm glad they've lost the Bumblebee can't talk trope. Oh my God, I know you've heard me complain about it many, many, many times. It, it is such a worthless trope and uh, I'm glad they've moved on from it. I'm glad whoever had that mandate that Bumblebee needed to find his voice decided to uh, backpedal on that because I much rather see the Transformers just doing things than Bumblebee trying to play around in his head. Now we've got so much more like Transformers news going on. There was so much more stuff at New York Comic Con, such as the IDW panel, uh, where we didn't really learn a lot about upcoming Transformers stuff other than the fact that Alex Milne is returning for uh, the Ultra, for the Cliff Jumper story. Uh, in Transformers Galaxies, and uh, that's going to be really neat. I'm a fan of Alex's work. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do on this IDW incarnation. Now, you know, there was a lot more <laughs> in the IDW panel that wasn't Transformers, and one thing I wanted to kind of uh, clue you folks in on, if you don't read uh, a lot of comics, um, there is a book that IDW is doing called Canto, and Canto is about this little tin man Kind of like the the Tin Man in Wizard of Oz, but he's tiny and the uh, not really like the same design. But he is a little tin person, and he goes on this quest because he is enslaved. The tin people are enslaved, and um, they do not have hearts. Their hearts have been removed, and his uh, the girl he has fallen in love with. Uh, and given him a name, they're not allowed to have names, uh, is dying, and he needs to recover her heart from the place where they've removed all of the Tin People's hearts. Um, and so he goes on this quest, and it's it's up to issue five. It's a six-issue mini, and it is it's a lot of fun. So if you have a chance to check it out, it's, it's cute, it's well-drawn, it's well-told, and IDW is continuing it into... 2020 there's going to be a one shot i believe this winter in 2019 plus a new uh limited series come 2020 also at the idw panel they reminded me i need to get caught up on teenage mutant ninja turtles that series is really good and they're approaching issue number 100 and i'm probably about 20 issues behind so there's there's going to be a point maybe even on the show i'll talk about it where i get uh, caught up by binge reading tmnt they also introduced, uh, it's a weird convergence of things I really like <laughs> at the IDW panel because Transformers is probably my main hobby. And, and those of you who listen to the show know uh, I love heavy metal and, and, and loud hard rock music. And arguably my favorite band of all time, Life of Agony out of Brooklyn, New York, uh, they are putting out a new record, but their bass player and songwriter Alan Robert, uh, he uh, is also a comic book artist, and he has done a number of, of creator-owned works with IDW, including his current series of uh, horror-themed adult coloring books called The Beauty of Horror. And so they announced, uh, I believe they announced another book while I was there. I'm, I don't keep up with those books too much, but it, it is very weird seeing John Barber and Alan Robert on stage next to each other uh, as a fan of Transformers and Life of Agony. And um, just to put it in perspective, uh, there is no band I've seen more live than Life of Agony. I think I'm at 13 or 14 times seeing them live. I've seen them alive enough times since the mid-90s to have lost count. They're doing a Kickstarter for a set of tarot cards based on the art of beauty of horror and i believe there's a black and white one that you can color yourself as well as a colored version that you can bid on if you just want cool looking colored cards so do check that out i'm pretty sure it's on idw's website it's probably up on kickstarter as well and also worth checking out and this is what i meant by going a little off topic for a little bit the new Life of Agony album came out uh, just a few weeks ago, and oh man, is it good. It is, um, it's a continuation of the story they told in their first record, River Runs Red. It's called The Sound of Scars, and uh, the River Runs Red is, is a, it's not rock opera, but it is tied together in some ways by these little vignettes about this teenager who is just going through some serious troubles, and uh, 
without oh, I'm I can't really guess I can't really spoil an album that's over 20 years old but uh he at the end in the last vignette he uh you believe he kills himself and what you find out in this is that he didn't die and so the vignettes in between the songs kind of deal with his struggles with with uh mental illness and depression and then the scars of what he had done to himself and i know this is kind of a dark turn for this show uh, but it is such such a good album the songs are all really good uh, it, it's it's if if you like good it uh, people would probably classify it as alternative metal because it does uh, run a bit more on the melodic side, uh, but not in the traditional metal way, but more in the rock and roll kind of way. Um, definitely, definitely check it out. Life of Agony, The Sound of Scars. And they have a new drummer on this record. And and to not go too far into the weeds here, uh, some bands sometimes just need a new vibe uh, behind them. And uh, there are two bands, The Life of Agony, and now, and, and a couple years ago, Lacuna Coil, uh, where I've noticed a new drummer really, really enhances their sound. And uh, the drummer for Life of Agony now, uh, Veronica Bellino, she is fantastic. And she fits their sound, so she's not really uh, out of place, but she kind of punches their sound up to the next level, which is really, really cool. All right. Okay, but enough enough about music. Actually, you know what? I will I will transition our music conversation here because another podcast I listen to, and yes, this is Transformers related. Um, another podcast I listen to on occasion is Talk Is Jericho, uh, hosted by wrestler Chris Jericho, and he is also the singer of a a, a metal band called Fozzy. You've probably heard of them. Uh, so the Jericho podcast just recently on talk is Jericho. He's also Canadian and he had on uh, a very uh, interesting <laughs> and uh, I don't want to say well-known, but they were well-known for a time. They were up and coming uh, and then they had their career kind of uh, pulled out from under them. And that is uh, this hard rock band from the eighties called kick X. Now you've probably heard me say kick X before kick X uh, was also writing songs in the U.S. Uh, and uh, for Spencer Proffer, and I've talked about this on our Transformers the Movie soundtrack show, and he, he being Spencer Proffer, uh, would <laughs> he actually stole their music for the Transformers the Movie soundtrack. We found this out in this podcast. Um, they are better known to Transformers fans as Spectre General. However, they have no idea where that name came from. Uh, it, it, there's some great little stories here about how... Uh, you know, great to hear, uh, you know, great to k- kind of experience in a podcast, not great for the people who happened, uh, to, but the guys in, in kick Axe basically had their career ruined twice at the same time. They had, uh, Spencer Proffer ripping them off in the U S re- reusing songs they wrote and not paying them. And then their manager in Canada, basically never paying their bills until, um, until they were arrested one day after a show uh, and had all their stuff confiscated and the manager fled to uh, what they believe is somewhere in the Caribbean. Uh, <laughs> they haven't found the guy yet. It's it's a crazy, crazy 80s rock and roll story, but uh, worth listening to. You should check it out. Talk is Jericho, the kick X episode. And uh, it, another neat thing there is that the song Hunger... Uh, which appears in Transformers the movie soundtrack was originally written by the guys in Kick Axe for Black Sabbath, uh, the Ian Gillian uh, fronted version of Black Sabbath, not the Ozzy or Ronnie James Dio versions of Sabbath. But it's it's amazing that that could have been a Black Sabbath song. And then uh, I guess Sabbath kind of broke up at the time, and it ended up being uh, used by King Cobra and the drummer in King Cobra was Carmine Apice, who was the drummer in Black Sabbath at the time. So uh, that really all makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Now, speaking of podcasts, since we're on the subject, uh, let's talk about a few that I've been on lately. Uh, If you're enjoying this and me rambling on about things, not necessarily Transformers related, and don't worry, we're going to talk a little more Transformers soon. uh, You should check out the Mike cyber radio podcast mike is one of our patreon uh seniors and uh he uh does a great show that i refer to as my favorite transformers adjacent podcast because he will talk transformers and talk some other things as well and 
I appeared on there once to talk Transformers and New York Comic Con. Well, not really, actually. I talked New York Comic Con and not Transformers uh, alongside of Jeremy from Transmissions because we were both at New York Comic Con. And once we wrapped up this season of CBS's Big Brother. Also appeared on uh, Transmissions' YouTube channel alongside Jeremy because we hung out for the day at New York Comic Con and uh, kind of recapped a lot of what I've been talking about here. And then finally, I also appeared on TFYLP's uh, weekly news recap show, and uh, that was a lot of fun and worth checking out as well. Now, going to go off topic one more time. So I have uh, another couple of other Twitter accounts, and one I use for uh, just tweeting at my favorite podcast host, and that's usually where I just make my attempts at comedy, uh, sometimes working blue off of <laughs> what I do here. So uh, I won't tell you the name of it, but I will tell you that um, the one of the podcasts I listen to and tweet at, Cashing In with T.J. Miller, uh, it's a comedy podcast uh, with the comedians Cash Levy and T.J. Miller, who you may know from uh, TV show Silicon Valley and a number of movies and voice acting roles or Transformers Age of Extinction. He was the uh, friend uh, of Mark Wahlberg's character who gets frozen and then blown up into pieces. Uh, they read a bunch of my tweets on their maskers segment, which is where they uh, they take questions from their fans, uh, you know, ask the masters, and you ask them. I, I usually tweet out, you know, they're nonsensical questions. Like uh, one of the ones they read of mine was, uh, if you get more bang for your buck, can you get more pennies for your farthings? Uh, uh, and that's kind of related to something they talked about once in an episode. But uh, it's just kind of cool. So about two episodes back as of right now is an episode called uh, Git, G-I-T, Git. Uh, the very end of the episode, TJ read, I think, three or four of my, my tweets at them. So uh, really, really cool moment for me just sitting in my car and then hearing that. So definitely check that out. Now, pivoting back to some more Transformers stuff since we're just about a half hour into the show, right? And uh, there's still so much news we didn't talk about. We have selects releases from New York Comic Con. Uh, the the hot rod, hot rod, <laughs> hot spot. Uh, no, it's, oh, man, I blew the name twice. Hot shot. I had to think about that for a second. Hot shot. I'm like, it's not Bumblebee. It's not hot spot and it's not hot rod. Hot spot. He needs to show up in Cyberverse, doesn't he? We got Cheeto, we got Bumblebee, we got Hot Rod. We need Hot Spot in that uh, hot shot in that show. Uh, <laughs> and, and what was the other release from NYC? Oh, the the Power Dasher, who Chromar, who I have not opened up yet. But shout out to uh, my old friend Mike Chromar for having a figure named after his uh, family name. We also had the Super 7 booth, which had... New, uh, the new see-through purple Megatron uh, thing. <laughs> Go look it up. Uh, it's not really my cup of tea. I did get to pick one up for Brian Kilby over at Radio Free Cybertron. Mailed that out to him. Uh, he talked about it and showed it off recently on their show. So uh, check them out at tfradio.net and on YouTube. Now, there's been plenty of Transformers news this weekend, including uh, the reveal of Piranacon. In full colors, fully combined. Uh, and boy, does it look nice. I haven't really delved too deep into the pictures, but what I saw looked really good. I'm a little bummed I haven't pre-ordered any of the figures, and I missed the window on the first four, so I really don't want to do the last two. I may wait and see uh, where these start showing up at other retailers, because as much as I'd like to do them on Hasbro Pulse, I seem to have missed my chance. So if they start showing up at BBTS... I might just do all six at once and then uh, pay $4 shipping to to get that to me, which isn't necessarily a bad idea. Got some stuff going on in Europe as well. Uh, there's a bunch of European Comic Cons that Hasbro is attending, one in Paris, one in uh, London, and one in uh, Lucca, Italy. And uh, so far they've revealed the prototype for Studio Series Devastator, which has prototype colored parts, so 
Don't get mad when you see it and it's blue. Those blue pieces are prototype figures and not the final colors. Uh, we also got some new Studio Series uh, reveals in text as of this recording. I got to go check Twitter and see if there's been photos of those guys yet. But uh, Studio Series uh, chugging away. I'm not terribly uh, an expert on it, but uh, I do like what I see a lot of the time. I'm still planning on finishing Devastator, but there are a lot of Transformers lines out right now. I mean, you have Generations, Generations Selects, Studio Series, Cyberverse, BotBots. Uh, we're supposed to get BotBots news out of Europe this weekend, too. Yeah, so whether or not we see BotBots news uh, still remains to be seen. But just so much exciting stuff going on in the world of Transformers. Another exciting thing uh, for me as a player of the Earth Wars game is that G.I. Joe is coming to Earth Wars. And uh, I've already been playing through this week. I've already got my hound that transforms into a vamp. There's also Soundwave as a hiss tank. Uh, I'm glad to see Hasbro incorporating G.I. Joe into something at this point. Not to mention uh, those two lines are inextricably tied. Uh, if you've seen The Toys That Made Us, which I, I, I very proudly worked on the Transformers episode, uh, you could see the tie between uh, the original G.I. Joe and then Micro Man and then Transformers. It's all uh, one thing eventually. And pretty soon on Transformers University in the next, I have to look on my schedule, but I say sometime in the next month or two, we're going to cover the first comic book crossover of G.I. Joe and the Transformers. And this happens throughout Transformers history. It happened at when the comics went to uh, Dreamwave, uh, when G.I. Joe's comics went to Devil's Due many times. It's happened in IDW uh, multiple times, really. They combined universes. It's happened with San Diego Comic Con toys. It's happened a whole bunch of times, so I'm glad it's continuing on. And uh, they're doing it really well. Earth Wars is a, hell, it's a heck of a lot of fun, uh, that game. And uh, I always say for a free game, it doesn't really work like many free games where they're they are i mean look they ask you to buy things they try to talk you into buying things i think over the three plus years i've been playing i've spent maybe i don't know two hundred dollars total i spent a little bit out in the offset i probably spent about a hundred that first year um because i wanted to get characters uh because it, it, it does have a kind of a collecting aspect to it but i've never felt like i had to i never felt like if i don't pay money i'm not going to uh Get, get to play the game or enjoy the game so uh, I, the game gets a strong endorsement from me uh, and if you keep up with it there's usually free stuff floating around there's a lot of loot links floating around uh, to help you earn some uh, free characters and free uh, currency within the game plus the story is written by Simon Furman so uh, it's just another great little take on the Transformers lore now speaking of Transformers lore I know I mentioned IDW, and I didn't mention uh, current IDW 2.0 universe. Uh, as of right now, I've read through issue 13. Issue 13 was really good. 12 was good. 6 was good. 13 was actually really good. I really felt engaged in that story. It's finally starting to move. That said, for what it took to get there, it, it's kind of frustrating. Uh, as someone who gets the comics for free from IDW, I would be mad if I spent money on this. But uh, you could probably start at issue 13-ish and, and kind of figure everything out. <laughs> uh, or start at 12. 12 really should have been issue 1, and 6 should have been issue 0. And you might have had a, a much stronger tie to this universe. Now, while we're talking about comics, because we are talking about New York Comic Con, let's talk a little bit about one of my other favorite publishers, and that is Valiant Comics. Um, saw a few th cool things there some toy related some movie re well no didn't see a movie related there well actually toy is movie related but there was something cool that's come out this week and I'm just going to quickly jump into those things first off comics related they're bringing back Quantum and Woody and I'll tie this into Transformers I promise uh, they're bringing back Quantum and Woody which is a uh, superhero duo uh, of brothers uh, and it is quirky and funny and if you've never read it please do why the original quantum and woody was launched uh with acclaim comics back in the 90s written by christopher priest aka jim owsley who you may remember was the editor on transformers g1 for a little bit uh back in the 80s for marvel and uh the art originally was uh created 
by Mark D. Bright, a.k.a. M.D. Bright, a.k.a. the guy that did the cover of Transformers number 5, the Shockwave cover, that reads, The Transformers are all dead. Yes, that cover was painted by Mark D. Bright. He is one of the co-creators of Quantum and Woody. Now, neither one of them are working on this iteration of uh, the characters or this book, but it's always a fun and silly ride. If you like fun and silly and something that is kind of like tongue-in-cheek, kind of along the lines of like The Tick, uh, where it's kind of a nod to superheroes, but also like full of weird stuff, then you should check out Quantum and Woody from Valiant Comics next year. Also coming next year from Valiant Comics is the Bloodshot movie. And I guess that's coming from Sony, really. But Bloodshot movie starring Vin Diesel based off the Valiant comic. And as a Valiant fan, super fan probably, uh, I am currently making my way through the previous Bloodshot series. It's just almost done. It's called Bloodshot Reborn, uh, which feels like this movie is kind of based off of it going off the trailer, uh, which is now on YouTube. When you haven't checked out the trailer, it is really good. I don't really like Vin Diesel, and I am excited to see this. If you don't know about Bloodshot, I'll tell you a little bit. Uh, kind of the character is kind of Weapon X meets the Punisher. Uh, so he's this guy who, uh, was made into a military killing machine and he has these nanites in his blood, little micro machine robots that, uh, heal him, uh, perpetually. And also, uh, I think they can hack computers in this continuity. I don't remember if he can use them for technology, but, so he's basically Weapon X, Wolverine, Wolverine with you know the healing ability and then a lot of guns like Punisher. Plus, he doesn't know his origin. Uh, and in this iteration and what seems to be in this trailer, he's getting fed different memories of who he was before he became Bloodshot. And they're all uh, presumably fake. And... Uh, uh, it's just really, really, really cool trailer, and I'm hoping the movie is as good as the trailer. And finally, you know, I hope some of you are listening uh, on your way back from TFCon. Did you have a good time? I'm really kind of bummed I missed it, but I know Eric from Steel City Bots gave me a shout out in the podcaster panel. I'm looking forward to hearing that uh, with whoever posted. It's usually the uh, it's usually Vangelis and uh, the the guys at uh, WTF podcast that that do that i also saw that my friend uh jen from stasis pod and icon underground was on that panel i'm really excited to to see how the the crowd uh reacted to her she is she is one of my longest friends in the fandom and i'm, I'm just so glad that, that she got to be a part of that panel now you know speaking of conventions just a couple of last little notes i have here about new york comic-con holy crap was it crowded uh, I'm not used to New York Comic Con being that crowded on a Thursday. Saturday's crowded usually. Friday's usually crowded in the afternoon. This was crowded Thursday morning. I could not believe it. Now, like usually Thursday morning is a good day to get around, get the things you want, get to take some time on the dealer floor because it's not crowded, not full of people, not full of uh, kids out of school and parents with their kids and teenagers uh, who have just gotten out of class. So I was shocked at how crowded New York Comic Con was. I was also kind of put off by the Entertainment Earth booth. Going back to Transformers Selects, uh, it was damn near impossible to get on that Entertainment Earth line and pick up whatever the pin was that they were uh, selling along those. So I ended up just getting off a of Hasbro Pulse because I could not deal with it. The guy who was running the line was kind of rude, and you needed to have won a lottery to get anything from that booth and that was well into friday so i was like man what a waste of time no way would i ever do that and uh i know a buddy of mine did that to get some funko pops that he uh he wanted but man that is not not the way to spend uh, a convention uh so uh thumbs down to entertainment earth for that one really uh sorry i, I know adam i've met adam a few times uh from uh entertainment earth and he's a good dude but that is uh, no way to run a line at a convention. I know that's how it's done. I know that's how Funko does it. But I, I don't see the appeal. Really don't. A uh, couple of last things, and these are TV-related for the most part. I know at the con, uh, the gang from The Walking Dead in, uh, announced the third show that still does not have a title, but we did get to see a trailer. Uh, it's basically Stranger Things meets Walking Dead. To me, it's it's a, 
um, about a bunch of kids who have grown up in the post-apocalypse and uh, they go on a quest. Uh, I will watch it. I'm a big fan of The Walking Dead. I, I know uh, it's not everybody's cup of tea anymore and I'm okay with that. I like the universe and I like to see where the characters go. That said, this season of The Walking Dead is uh, surprisingly really good so far. Um, I, I wasn't a fan of The Whisperers as part of the comic. I thought the story went on too long and it wasn't terribly interesting, but on screen they play really well. And uh, I'm liking where this goes and I'm liking uh, the portrayals of Alpha and Beta. Uh, both the actors who are playing those roles are really, really good. And uh, I think finally, as I just, I just finished up before recording this, I just finished up watching the new season, season seven of Letter Kenny. And uh, man, what an ending. I won't spoil it, but man, what an ending. Uh, <laughs> if you like quirky Canadian comedies with great wordplay, you should be watching Letter Kenny on Hulu. It is such a fun show, uh, though it is adults only. There's certainly for mature audiences with that language. And with that, I am going to wrap up this edition of TFU News and Views. Once again, if you want to help out this show or Transformers University, which I just posted episode 75, please swing up on our Patreon, patreon.com slash TFU info. For as little as a dollar a month, you would have gotten uh, episode 75 at least a day early. Probably this news report at least a day early as well as all sorts of other goodies, depending on what level you subscribe at. Uh, subscriptions start at $1 and go on the scale, up the scale to $10. You can also help us out by using our Amazon links, tfu.info slash Amazon. Uh, just click on that anytime you need to do some Amazon shopping. It'll take you straight to amazon.com. It won't cost you a penny more, but some of the pennies you send to Amazon will get sent over to tfu.info. Also, speaking of the Amazon uh, affiliate stuff, uh, I've created a Twitter account, if you're unaware, uh, at TF Deals. That's at TF Deals. It's uh, Transformers Deals. Uh, and it's it's not going to just be the Amazon stuff. Whenever I see something on sale at a good price, uh, I will post about it uh, when I can. Uh, but the Amazon links there do also go to helping the site. So uh, right now I did tweet out that the... Uh, War for Cybertron Siege Galaxy Force Optimus Prime is under $40. That's a leader class figure. Normally over $50 or a retail price at $49.99 uh, is right now at about $38. And uh, seems to have been dropping the last few days. Uh, so definitely go check that out. Of course, that is at the time of this recording. Lastly, if you want to keep in touch with me speaking of twitter uh twitter's the best way at tfu underscore info you can also keep up with the site and the show on instagram at instagram.com slash tfu info at facebook.com slash tfu info and finally the youtube channel www.youtube.com slash tfu info for all sorts of videos and more uh, i should post some of those uh, unboxing footage of uh, siege wave 5 and maybe do a little bit of review. We'll see what we have time for this week. Don't forget to check out Transformers University episode number 75. If it hasn't shown up in your feed already, it will drop in about a day. So definitely check that out. Uh, a lot of fun. We're delving into five more episodes of season three uh, of G1, uh, including Web World, the one where Galvatron grows crazy, and Carnage and C Minor, uh, the one with all of the animation errors. Uh, it's pretty riddled <laughs> with terrible animation errors. Uh, we'll also talk the Quintesson Journal, the big broadcast of 2006, and the ultimate weapon. And we've got a lot of great stuff coming up on Transformers University, so please uh, make sure you subscribe, like, click the bell, whatever you do, whatever it is you do to listen to this show, make sure you do it so you know when the latest and greatest is out there for you. And that will do it for Another edition of TFU News and Views. Once again, I am your host, Anthony Brucali, owner, operator, madman behind TFU.info. Until next time, see ya.